Okay, you know what? We'll get into your your like tech background first, and then go from there. So, I assume that you've had an interest in tech for a long time. I know you've been programming for a really long time as well, but like, when did all of that start for you? And what 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 did you start on? Yeah, yeah. So I don't I don't know the name of the language. I'm not even sure if it had a name of a language. Mm. Uh, there was a video game in the 90s called Grail or Grawl. It was like G R A A L. And it was like a Zelda clone that you could o- also open up a level editor. And the level editor, you could double click on PCs, on treasure chests, on pretty much any interactable item. Mm-hmm. And it actually came with a small scripting language. And so when I was there, I was just like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I found one that did like a spiral fire, like. Whoa. Okay. Uh, and so I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I opened it up, and there was just a bunch of math and a while loop and X's and all that. And I've never seen code before. And I was just like, that's kind of neat. So I started tweaking with it, and I started kind of figuring things out. Then eventually I could figure out how to shoot fire in a straight line because I was like, okay, yeah, you just add stuff to X. X means horizontal. Y yep. means up and down. Like, I didn't realize that you could swap the variable names or anything. And eventually it just I kept just figuring things out. And I was like, oh, this is really fun. I knew about while loops and mm-hmm. basic stuff. You know, it was like some NPC script. It didn't. It looked like C. It's C-ish. Mm. And so it was pretty easy for me to just kind of get running and doing that. And then in in high school, I took a programming class, QBasic. It was it was okay. I did. I made the mistake of just making a dumb game. I made uh, Blackjack, very boring game oh, to make yeah, as it is. Enough, yeah, uh, should have done something different. And then I went to college and did a lot of Java, and it really kind of hit home for me more in my second class. After hmm. my first class, I thought. Maybe I don't want to be a programmer, you know, like maybe making those games and all that. That was fun. But this isn't that fun. Like, this was that is a kinda... Java thought or a programming thought? Programming thought, because, right. you know, like school intro to programming is like, here's the size of an int. Here's yeah. the this. Here's the that. Like, it's 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 not fun to, to put it mildly. Right. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's very academic. And looking back, very happy that I had it that way, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't get that, and they don't get a four-year slow introduction into programming where you slowly get more and more complex. They just get mm-hmm. thrown into a deep end, and like, here's how you render a div, right? Like, I didn't start there. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, a lot Talk of people are starting on, like, boot camps, for example, where they're like, oh, I just build a web application. It's just like, you don't have the core fundamental understanding of how these things actually work, like what memory management is, what a pointer is. It's something you yes. then have to learn after the fact. Precisely. And so it's it's one of those things that it's just I'm very happy it happened. But after my first class, I was pretty dis- disheartened. And then my second class, like day, like a week one, I was like, ah, oh, it's going to be just more stuff I don't want to do. And then week two hit and it was like, all right, time to start data structures. And it's like, let's go over a linked list mm-hmm. and, you know, public class node curly brace. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to go to brace. And it's like, next node mm-hmm. and, when it, and when i saw that i was like what it references it. Mm. and all of a sudden it's just like i see memory right like i was just yeah. like oh my god this is the coolest thing ever and then it just it was cool after that and then after that it was just like that was the moment that was true like i remember just being floored at how cool mm-hmm. the fact that you could reference yourself in a class and you could just keep on going yep. And I could see it. And that was like my first time ever seeing something, you know, in your mind's eye like that. And so I was just like, this is this is absolutely the coolest. And I think that's probably the moment where like I truly fell in love with programming. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. No, no, I, I have a very similar experience. I wrote uh, there was a game library called Greenfoot, which is like an introductory education thing that I learned back in high school. Then when I got into university, I did some introductory Python stuff. It probably wrote blackjack and rock paper scissors and maybe like game yeah. of life things like like basic basic things then i also had my data structures course which was also in java and i i know exactly the feeling you're talking about and then i did uh i think it was an assignment on trees or something and a star out like basics like searching algorithms like wait that and then like you can start piecing it together in real world problems like you see oh a yeah. map that is just a really complex like tr- like a really complex graph and you're using these same sort of concepts so yeah. even though you're doing this simple thing you can see how it like pieces into these bigger problems yeah exactly it, it's exciting it, mm. it just gets so dang exciting and then once you start seeing that it just feels so cool yeah yeah no that's absolutely the only problem is just 
I, I feel like a lot of... A lot of educators who just don't get into the content is just another year of teaching the same content. Oh, mm-hmm. it's another group of students. Especially when they don't do new assignments each time. I, I think the best classes I had is the ones where the... The, the, the professors actually made new content every time. Like they, it was the same sort of structure, but it was like, yeah. okay, for uh, I had like a web dev class, for example. One year they did like a weather application. Another year it was some other thing. And it was like the same core tooling and the same sort of core concepts, but the topic around it was different. I think that that helps keep them interested along with it, getting the students interested as well. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. You generally see you'll see a, a much more excited, uh, excited professor if he's actually you know if he's engaged. Then you can see it a lot more. Like I had a professor Hunter Lloyd in Montana State University, mm. very much so like this. It just was totally into robots and all that. And I think he appeared on on Jay Leno with his alarm clock that you'd throw, and if it hit the wall, it would snooze for ten minutes, and then ring. So then you'd have to go get it. And so it was like a very, very clever idea, right? Mm. And so uh, very, very funny. And it was just, you know, he was so engaged, it made me so engaged. Yeah, yeah. You know, 